Welcome to my studio. I'm Rhonda Church Finfrock of Fruitful Life Studio and today I have some fabric 100% cotton. These are quilt panels. They came in a set probably about a dozen birds to the panel. I have been inspired by a lot of um, art collages lately so I thought I would use the new IOD stamps and add some elements and make this a textile collage on an upcycle or refashion that I'm doing. But for my refashion, I wanted to use part of this gorgeous hand crocheted tablecloth I just found. Um, and really, it didn't match these birds are similar but they just don't match the intensity so this project is a good way for you to use what you already have maybe some fabric that's just not a little right or you want to bring in a color that's not there um, I'm also going to be showing for those of you who have purchased my batik paints I'm going to be showing you uh, two different ways to do a resist today and one of them is using the masking fluid from your batik set. So this is my refashion. It is not done yet. Yes, it is a lot. <laughs> I did hand painting, collage, lots. Uh, there we go. There's that beautiful crochet doily. I have a ruffle on the bottom of intense color, but I wanted to show you this sample that I have already painted. So this was the quilt panel as it came from the quilt store. And now you see it in my collage format with beautiful paints and resists and collage and stamping, stenciling. Okay, so I have some stencils here. They are from Stencil Girl, but any type of like small scale detailed stencils, I just grabbed some that I thought might work well. I've got my quilt squares that are pre-washed with no fabric softener. Whenever you're painting on textiles, you wanna make sure there's no fabric softener and that they're pre-washed. Okay, the first resist I'm going to do is going to be this water-based resist from the Pintart. Um, it comes with the Pintart batik set. But again, there are other um, resists out there that work. Okay, this is for this are for my customers that have purchased purchased the set. I wanted just to do a demo of what one way that I use these. So this is a gel. I have my little IOD um, scraper. I know there's a, a proper term for that. And now I'm gonna pick out a stencil. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with this one. That kind of looks like a sun, but I'm going to put it right here in the corner. I have a nice area. I'll probably have some stamping and postage stamps that I do for, uh, I make into little appliques. So I think that would be a good place to put this. So I'm going to squirt out some of this gel on the scraper get plenty on there. Before I do that though, I need to spritz my fabric. I need to loosen that up so that it accepts that gel. And I usually get my little shop cloth, and just dab off any excess. Again, it will help that, that um, gel penetrate to the back side so that when I paint it, it's going to resist the paint. And I will see whatever is in the background. That's what I will see. So now I'm just gonna hold it and just scrape this. I could tape it if I want. Plenty on there. Hold it in place and just scrape it across that stencil. Make sure it's covered. Let's go back up this way. Again, taping might not be a bad idea. Okay, now I'm gonna lift that off. And I don't know if you can see this, but the design is really shiny. Oh, I don't wanna mess it up. It 
it's very shiny not sure if you can see that stencil design and I'm probably smearing it because I'm picking it up for you okay the next thing I want to do is I want to put a little bubble around that um, bird so that when I'm painting my batiks are really fluid paints they're for batik but I use them for hand painting and um, I want to put a little bubble just to keep some light around so that the bird isn't taken up by the paint. Now these trays, I just got them. I got a whole stack for when I teach classes. I got them at Ikea and they were, I think they were like 99 cents and they have been the perfect little tray that I can just do some art then set it aside for later, let it dry on its own, or put it out in the sun, and it's clean and taken care of. Now I think I'm also gonna put a line where that belly is so that whatever color of paint or batik I use on that is going to uh, stay bright. And then I'm gonna do the eye, just in case. I want to just keep that eye free from paint, probably the beak too. I can always go back and paint after I wash this out. I can go ahead and paint again, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, now I've got this little skewer and I'm going to take, I like these little mini ones. I think they're like in the baking aisle. Maybe they're for cake pops or something. They're a little shorter and I'm just going to make sure that gel even though you can't see it I'll take a close-up of it for my my YouTube video when I'm editing so you can see the shine on it I'm just gonna make sure it's into that fiber and that's about all I'm gonna do to resist this one maybe Maybe I'll do something in this corner. Might do some stamping up here and up here. So let's do one more little thing. So let's go with um, let's go with this one. This one's really lacy, and so maybe there's a big flower here. I'll go ahead and put a big flower here. So is there one closer? No, I like that one right here. So now I'm going to get some more gel. And again, if I don't see your comment, I will get back to you or respond. Best way to do it is go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. Now again, I'm just gonna scrape some of this on softly over the stencil. I love these little, these little scrapers because they are soft. They have a new style that's a little, I think a little more firm, but I haven't used those yet. But so far, for what I'm doing with this resist, I really like, I like this soft, softness. That should be enough. You can see I don't worry about the borders or the edges. And then I'm gonna lift that off. This is the part in my Facebook Live that I break away and delete the rest of the narration. I'm going to go over it with you now as a voiceover so that we can speed this along and you can get creating. The first type of resist, paint resist, I applied the gel from the Pint Art masking fluid. This second type of resist, I'm using Jacquard white textile paint. I am just swirling it around the stencil. I'm not worried too much about detail. If I want to fade this out into the rest of the fabric panel, I could spray it a little bit, rub it around with a brush or a finger. So that's basically very simple, just stenciling on the Jacquard fabric paint. It already has the sealer in it. Now I am spritzing my fabric panel after I heat set. The heat setting is the important part. You don't want to reactivate any of these water-based products. So heat set everything in between all your layers. Now I'm just washing on some of that batik paint in the places that I want a washy watercolor background.
I paint in layers and heat set in between each layer. The background, the flowers, the detail. Here as I flip this panel over, you can see how it reacts. The paint reacts with the resist. Now I will be demonstrating how I paint the panel with the gel resist or the masking fluid from Pentart. First, heat set it. Well, first you let that gel dry. They recommend 24 hours, but I put it in the sun or put it on my line or just left it alone. When it was dry, I heat set the panel with that resist on it. Now, after heat setting, I am washing in some beautiful Pentart colors. These are very transparent, so again, they won't overtake the image. You can see I am spritzing with a lot of water, dabbing it back. On the back, you can kind of see where the resist was because you see that image of the outline of the stencils. Once you're done painting, heat set that again, and then heat set it really well this time, and then you are going to soak it in some warm sudsy water with mild soap. Just let it soak, and then get a, a fingernail brush and kind of scrub away that resist to see what you get. Now I'm going to explain how I stamp. I stamp individual little pieces that I paint for applique, like the little postage stamps. This is from the Ephemera Type by IOD. And as you can see, I've also stamped directly on the painted bird panel. Just make sure you heat set before you do that and stamp the same way. So I've got some strips of fabric that I have salvaged from the borders of the bird panel. And I am going to be rolling on the fabric paint. This is Jacquard black fabric paint. I'm rolling it on to my IOD stamps using an IOD brayer. Yes, using paint versus ink sometimes gets a little messy, but this is a collage looking kind of like some mail, so it's okay to get a little ink messes here and there. The main reason I use the paints, the textile paints, versus fabric inks. The paints or the screen printing paints tend to be more permanent and bold. One very important hint that I use when I'm using the paints or the screen printing paints is to spritz your fabric just so slightly, mist it with some water first to loosen up those fibers so that it accepts the paint. The paint method is much bolder than the ink, although it can be a little messy, but that's okay. This is looking like a postage type collage, so ink mess or the appearance of stamped ink mess is perfectly suitable for this project. After stamping, I heat set and now spritz again with water and I do just a really washy, solid color of paint for these little postage stamps. If you wanted to get really careful with it, you could water down the paint 
brush it carefully in the middle so it's spread out but leave those edges white if you want to get out your pinking shears and trim a little zigzag edge it could look like a little postage stamp and as I'm doing the narration I remembered I have the cutest micro uh, pinking shears that I got off of Amazon I'll list those in the descriptions as well they're really fun for little tiny collage projects like this after painting that final paint layer of some darker batiks, some browns for the twigs, I come back in with white. I always end with a white fabric paint to bring out some of the light. Once you're done with your resists and your stamping and your painting and your heat setting, it's time to use all these pieces into your fabric collages. Sign up for my email, fruitfullifestudio.com, to get an alert of when my newest workshop is available. It will be called Birds, Butterflies, and Blossoms, and I, it will feature how I put all these pieces together in artful apparel. Thank you for watching, and happy creating. If you have any questions, please reach out.